Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Real Classic Film Reviews and welcome back to part two of my Complete Criterion Collection. Uh, this time we are doing shelf number two. Um, if you haven't seen shelf number one, I will link it in the description below. But for now, let's get right into it with the second shelf of my Criterion Collection Blu-rays. And we're going to start off with um, a Western, Western classic. This is 310 to Yuma, directed by Delma Daves. Um, you know, obviously a fantastic film. Um, really big fan of uh, Ford and Heflin in this. And this was directed by Daves, like I said, who also directed uh, la, 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 Broken Arrow and, oh, crikey, The Last Wagon, uh, another two great westerns, uh, amongst other things. But, they're, you know, they're kind of recommended viewing. If you've yet to see those, um, then definitely do so. But, yeah, 1957's 310 to Yuma, spine number 657. All right, next up we've got uh, a nice old-school horror movie in The Uninvited, directed by the great Lewis Allen. This is from 1944, spine number 677. And this is, you know, horror from uh, a different age, really, you know, brilliantly atmospheric 40s kind of haunted house creepy movie back when horror could kind of scare you with just um, creaking doors and kind of wind blowing through curtains, um, completely drenched in, in atmosphere um really really well done definitely want to uh add to your halloween viewing list if you haven't seen it yet incidentally um i can't remember who the actress is in this but ray milland in this is great and i don't i'm not really a massive fan of him usually um but definitely i'm in this so uh check that out uh next up is um it's a mad 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 world um so in between making um you know, big, challenging, big themed movies like Judgment at Nuremberg and um, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, uh, things like that. Stanley Kramer knocked out this crazy road movie caper film. Um, essentially, uh, there's a crash on a highway and the victim of the crash basically tells everybody that there's a lot of gold, um, a lot of money, sorry, hidden somewhere. Uh, every man and his dog tries, you know, basically jumps in the car and tries to find it. Uh, interestingly enough, I mean, it's this is it's the it's such a long movie, 163 minutes, but there's also duh, 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 can't find it now, uh, a 197 minute extended version of the film. Um, I mean, it's a great film. It's got a great cast, but crikey, it's uh, it's an undertaking. It's massive. Great addition, this though. Um, definitely want to check out if you haven't already done so. Fantastic cover out there as well. All right, next up we've got. Uh, Erase Ahead, obviously the uh, first feature film from David Lynch. Controversially, I'm not the biggest David Lynch fan ever. Um, I do enjoy his work. He's lost me a little bit recently. And um, by recently, I probably mean in the last 10, 15, maybe even 20 years. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm always interested to see what he does. I think he's an interesting director, if nothing else. And obviously, I'm very interested in the fact that you know, his early career trajectory, um, this being his first feature film. And I think that, you know, being able to follow that up with The Elephant Man and then ultimately, not ultimately, but then Dune. Um, such a steep, a steep learning curve in a few years. Um, obviously, Dune wasn't, uh, you know, was almost the kind of the end of him, but. He came back, you know, he came back with um, Blue Velvet after that, so he didn't do too bad. But yeah, some of his films are, are you know, are just not for me. It's just what it is. Uh, next up, we've got um, classic uh, kind of rom yeah, rom-com, I guess you could say. You know, a very early example of the rom-com. Uh, 1934's It Happened One Night, by number 736, uh, directed by, obviously, Frank Capra. Uh, the, the, the great Frank Capra, I mean, crikey. Um, what, 90 years later, it's still probably one of the best rom-coms there is. Uh, brilliant performances by Gable and Colbert in this. Um, yeah, excellent stuff. Uh, following that up with uh, Tootsie by Sidney Pollock, uh, Dustin Hoffman classic. Probably, oh no, I was almost going to say Dustin Hoffman's last great film, but, I'll, but Rain Man came after this. So maybe his penultimate last great film. Um, if you like, before he fell off a little bit. Obviously, prior to that, he was just kind of owning everything that he did. Uh, but yeah, 1982. Um, you know, God, it's, I don't need to tell you about it. Dustin Hoffman in drag. 
excellent stuff. Uh, we're going to follow that up with uh, The Fisher King um, from 1991, spy number 764. Uh, you know, from Terry Gilliam, obviously, back when Terry Gilliam could actually get films made. This was 1991. Seems to have struggled ever since, bless him. Um, you know, it's got those Gilliam touches throughout. Look at that cover art, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, you know, the late, great Robin Williams is obviously excellent in this, but re-watching it, Jeff Bridges does such a great job. Bridges is fantastic in this. He's such an ass. For <laughs> It's got a very 90s yuppiness to it. Um, the transfer on this is excellent because I remember watching this back in the day and I think I watched it on, like, VHS and then Sky Movies and stuff. But when you watch this Blu-ray, it's it's excellent. So, you know, if, you, if you're kind of in the mood for a bit of fun... That's uh, a good one to go with. Uh, next up is The French Lieutenant's Woman, um, starring Meryl Streep and Jeremy Irons, fine number 768. Uh, I've never seen the book that this was based on, and I know that there's a big hoo not maybe not a hoo-ha, but obviously you're always going to be comparing a classic bit of literature to the film that it, that's um, it's been adapted from, or that it was, it was adapted by. Um, but yeah, Irons and Streep, you know, they're going to be great. And I love those kind of films that have like a kind of film, not film within a film, but story within a story structure to them with uh, Irons and Streep playing multiple characters in this. I won't spoil it too much if you haven't seen it because it's definitely, definitely worth your time. Uh, next up, again, Francois Truffaut in Day for Night, um, spine number 769 uh, from 1973. You know, it's kind of famous now for being one of the best films about films our best films about filmmaking uh should i say but it's i mean look at that cover art that's amazing brilliant well worth checking out next up we have moonrise kingdom um from wes anderson this is a bit of an underrated wes anderson film spine seven seven six incidentally um i really enjoy this but even a lot of people who i know who are fans of wes anderson either haven't even seen it or aren't really too fussed on it great cast but you know it's just got it's Wes Anderson so if you're a fan of his work and his humor and and and, and whatnot you know what to expect and you're gonna love it um but I love that one I think it's uh, I think it's a grower so if you if you weren't keen at first maybe check it out again and see what you think uh what have we got where are we up to Speedy uh Speedy from Harold Lloyd uh, obviously in the previous video I showed um what did I show Safety Last uh so this is um Spine 788 from 1928. I think this was Harold Lloyd's last silent film. I might be wrong. I might be totally wrong. <laughs> Speedy was the last silent feature to Harold Lloyd, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, you know, it's great. It's Check it out. Uh, Burroughs uh, documentary. Um, one of the kind of lost, long lost pieces of, of cinema or, or filmmaking, uh, a film that was thought lost. Uh, for many years before being rediscovered and obviously ultimately put out by the Criterion Collection. Brilliant uh, special features on this. Definitely worth picking up for those, but check that out. Uh, next up, we've got the Apu Trilogy. Now, I've only very recently uh, this year watched uh, the second two in this trilogy. I'd seen the first one a couple of times. Never got round to uh, the, um, I won't pronounce these, but the Unvanquished in the world of Apu, but really, really glad I did. I mean, this set is absolutely one of the best criterion sets you can get um heartbreaking oh, god yeah it's amazing i mean crikey I, it needs a separate video for me to do any justice to it but any interest in this at all don't hesitate to go pick it up because it's well worth your time and speaking of which um another film it took me a long time to kind of come around to or finally get to watch was edward yang's a brighter summer day from 1991 uh by number eight or four I mean, this is epic. This is one of the greatest drama films ever made, without a shadow of a doubt. It's absolutely epic. It's, I mean, it's epic in length. Crikey, how long is this? 200, it's nearly four hours long. Um, but yeah, one of the probably one of the greatest and arguably greatest coming-of-age films ever made um, in any language. I mean, obviously, this is a Taiwanese film. But wow, looks amazing. The music in it is fantastic. It must, yeah, it comes on two discs because it's got um, an absolutely amazing documentary that I watched. Da, 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 da. Um, Our Time, Our Story, a 113 minute documentary from 2002. Pick this up. I mean, if you just, if you see it for, you know, if you oh, just pick it up, 
Right, next up we've got Only Angels Have Wings from Howard Hawks, starring um, Cary Grant and Jean Arthur. Um, I think this is what Hawks basically knocked out between uh, Bringing Up Baby and His Girl Friday. You know, so that's that's the kind of standard that we're talking about now. Uh, 1939 and Spine number 806, but yeah, brilliant film. Go check that out. Uh, next up, we've got... Um, in a Lonely Place by Nicholas Ray. This is basically one of the greatest film noirs ever made. That's all I'm going to say. Go check that out. Right, next up is another film here, which I kind of didn't pick up for a long time. Um, Alexander Hall's Here Comes Mr. Jordan. And this film is absolutely fantastic. I love this film. I think I, I kind of watched and spoke about it maybe on my Instagram um, a while ago now. But basically... Um, it very much reminded me, I mean, it's not exactly the same as that, but it had a very Quantum Leap feel to it. If anybody who's watched the Quantum Leap TV show, um, I mean, this guy dies, he kind of gets brought back by an angel um, and he can return to Earth by um, entering somebody else's body. It's hilarious. It's poignant. It's ugh, just honestly, go check this out and... Um, you will not be disappointed. Next up, we've got uh, Doctor Strangelove, or How I Stopped, um, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Uh, Kubrick's dark as hell satire on uh, war and nuclear devastation uh, with Peter Sellers, probably one of Peter Sellers' finest performances, because um, he does multiple performances in this, but yeah, still one of Kubrick's best. I mean, it's, well, that's not saying much, is it? But, you know. Uh, the In-Laws by um, Andrew Bergman, or written by Andrew Bergman, but it's an Arthur Hiller film. Uh, I need to rewatch this. I'll be honest, I watched it when I first bought it. I wasn't the biggest fan, um, and a lot of people had recommended this to me. Um, I do love Alan Arkin as well, so I'm going to rewatch this. I'm going to give it another shot, uh, but it's not my favourite Criterion release. Um, there's, I mean, I, it's funny. There was funny moments in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of regarded as a madcap classic and it just didn't get me in that way. So moving on, we've got uh, Terence Malick's The New World. Um, I haven't watched the... Uh, I haven't watched this disc, basically, but obviously I've seen The New World uh, a few times uh, in the cinema and on home video. It's, yeah, it, it's obviously spectacular to look at. It's obviously immaculately put together. Is it dramatically engaging? Is it, um, you know, rewarding in that kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say a kind of stereotypical st structure of a movie way, but there's, there's, you know, it's Terrence Malick, again, a little bit like Wes Anderson. You're either, you're either with it or you're not. And then sometimes I'm with it and sometimes I'm not. And I think that you have to be in the right frame of mind to kind of appreciate some of his films and the way that they shot and the way that they're put together and, and let them kind of wash over you. I hope that doesn't sound too pretentious. But yeah, that's Terence Malick's The New World. Um, yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Lone Wolf and Cub, The Collection. Uh, some of my favourite Criterion cover art right there. Absolutely excellent. Really big fan of these films. Uh, kind of really got into them when I was getting into a bit of a kind of samurai, Japanese samurai kick uh, a few years back. And I think that I'd seen... Uh, duh, 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 the second one, Baby Cat at the River Styx, which I think is still my favourite, and I think it's widely regarded as maybe being the best one. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case, but usually when I kind of read read up on them, but they're all great. Um, obviously based on the the classic manga series, which I haven't read, but you know they are brilliantly violent, but they're also kind of really well made, well written, dramatic movies as well. But fantastic cover out there. All right. So speaking of which, speaking of Japanese films, we've got uh, Akira Kurosawa's Dreams. Um, only watched it once when I first bought it. Uh, it's not for everyone. It's interest. It's an interesting piece. Obviously, it's made up of eight vignettes based on Kurosawa's actual dreams themselves. Um, but there's a good booklet in this that I enjoyed. So it's definitely worth picking up for if you're a Kurosawa completist. But mm, yeah. Uh, Mildred Pierce uh, with Joan Crawford and uh, directed by, you know, the legend that is Michael Curtiz. Uh, I mean, Crawford, pff, absolutely excellent in this. Um, Curtiz was 
I mean, I've lost count of how many fantastic films that he was making uh, around this time. But, you know, it's a classic and needs to be in your collection. And we've got Being There, a uh, Hal Ashby film. Another great Peter Sellers performance. Obviously, he's out there on the edge uh, in Doctor Strange, love, but really, really good on this. Probably a really underrated performance from Sellers in this. Uh, does a really great job, but another one that's definitely worth your time. Um, and then we've got They Live By Night, which was the first... I doubted myself there, but I think it's the first film directed by Nicholas Ray, uh, who'd obviously go on to make um, Rebel Without a Cause, uh, Johnny Guitar, On Dangerous Ground, Bigger Than Life, amongst others. Um, but yeah, I mean, when this is your first film, God, great, fantastic crime noir thriller. Um, love that cover art as well. That's excellent. And that's by number 880. All right, next up, we've got Tarkovsky's Stalker. Um, phew, crikey, what a film. Again, another film that it kind of needs its own video almost to discuss its themes, um, its imagery, um, that ending. I'm going to rewatch this, I think, uh, because I'd maybe might do, I'd like to do a video on this, I'd like to do a review on this, if I dare. I'll see what else is out there on YouTube, but um, crikey. Looking forward to picking the mirror up. I know the mirror's just been released here in the UK. Or has it? Or it's about to be, I'm not sure. Uh, George Cukor's The Philadelphia Story, with basically a holy trinity there of uh, acting talent, Grant Hepburn and Stewart. Really, really great kind of uh, romantic, again, another romantic comedy uh, from 1940. Uh, brilliant love triangle movie there. Uh, Spy number 901, if you are interested. Uh, there's another George Cukor film coming up, I think, a bit later on. But yeah, we'll check that out also. Next up, uh, speaking of Terry Gilliam, this is Jabberwocky. Um, and this is an early film after he kind of came out of the, the, you know, his Monty Python days where he was doing uh, some of the Python films, which I'm a big fan of. And this is very Python-esque, um, if you like. Uh, kind of really kind of keep, retains that vibe, um, that madcap kind of... Um, kind of nonsense comedy almost, uh, which I'm a big fan of and Gilliam's so great at. Uh, next up, we've got Night of the Living Dead by George Romero, Spy 909. Um, again, I'm going to watch this as part of my uh, Halloween viewing. It's Night of the Living Dead. It's a masterwork. Uh, right. <laughs> Female Trouble. Um, the only John Waters film I'd seen um, and I hadn't seen it I hadn't seen it before I picked this up. I picked it up in the sale. Um, pfft, wow. It's it's something. Crikey. Um, I think I've actually put on uh, social media somewhere, you know, I've picked this up. Has anybody seen it? Um, I've never seen a John Waters film. What am I in for? And I just got kind of um, laughed at, I think, by everybody because they just knew what I was going to be in for. Wow. Yeah. What shall I, I mean, let me know. What shall I watch after this? Uh you know, that, that Waters has made. I know he's made, obviously, a lot, a, lot, a lot of stuff, but where do I go from here is basically the question that I'm asking. Um, right. Um, Panic, great, great um, 40s crime drama from uh, France here. Who, who directed this? Uh, Julien de Vivier. Julien de Vivier. Um, excellent film. Love that kind of cover art as well. Look at the eyes on those people. But yeah, spy number... Where are we looking? Oh, 955. Five. All right. And then we've got The Truth or La Verite uh, by Clouseau. Um, quite a late Clouseau film, this actually, from 1960. Yeah, so very late. I'm not sure if it's his latest film, but I'm sure he made something after that. But excellent kind of uh, courtroom drama um, slash thriller, I guess, um, with an absolutely amazing... Um, Oh, Bridget Bardo performance. Uh, obviously, she looks fantastic, but also does an amazing job in this film. So check that out. Right, we're going to follow that up with Detour, which is another one of my favourite kind of crime thriller noirs uh, from 1945. Uh, Edgar J. Ulmer's Detour. Spine number 966. 
really short film this is it 69 minutes but basically the story of the most unlucky person in the world um i won't spoil any of the plot for you but uh yeah tom neil basically the most unlucky man on planet earth um yeah check that out uh, my brilliant career um from Gillian Armstrong. Gillian Armstrong's debut film, this, and I don't think she ever made a better film. I think that I, I, she didn't make a load of films. She didn't make a great deal of movies, but I think this was probably the best thing that she ever did. Uh, so she kind of peaked really quickly. A uh, good Sam Neill uh, performance in this as well. So I quite like those kind of uh, Australian outback uh, films. Good. Uh, next up, we've got Alan J. Pakula's Clute. Uh, from 1971, spine number 987. Um, again, Pakula, I don't think, made a great deal of movies, um, a great deal of many movies. I think this was his second film. Crikey, I might be wrong. I'll have to check up on that. But, I mean, Crikey, in the 70s, he was making films like The Parallax View and All the President's Men. This has a brilliant Jane Fonda performance in it. She looks absolutely lovely and she does a really good job. And obviously, you know, the always great Donald Sutherland, but excellent film um and this was the next george cukor film i believe oh no george stevens sorry i do apologize um fred astaire and ginger rogers in swing time just a classic you know old school 30s dance caper 979 spy number um oh, yeah just brilliant choreography brilliant music you know it, that it's a just a fantastic example of um you know the classic black and white musicals um next up we do have the george cukor film uh holiday with Catherine hepburn and Cary grant from the late 30s 1938 spine number 1009 um again yep yeah, so two years before they would uh grant and hepburn would team up together again in the uh philadelphia story they were starring together in holiday so yeah brilliant and finally, for this shelf, we have um, 1964's Failsafe, um, directed by Sidney Lumet, the great Sidney Lumet, starring the great uh, Henry Fonda. Really good kind of companion piece almost to um, Dr. Strangelove, the kind of serious side of it, if you like, with Fonda as the president who's literally, you know, spends a good deal of the, of the running time of the film on the phone uh, trying to avert nuclear holocaust. Um but yeah, <laughs> as uplifting as that sounds, that's gonna. I'm gonna leave the um, the video there. That's the second shelf of my complete Criterion collection. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Any questions on any of the releases here? Just let me know, and I will see you all very soon. Bye bye.